Um, the, this is a short talk on uh, data simulation in tsunami modeling. Um, we have just uh, started to work in this field and I'll show some preliminary results. Um, so it's a joint work with Maria and Serge. Uh, Maria is involved uh, with the uh, optimization algorithms uh, uh, for the parameters, which I'll be talking. And um, um, yeah, so I'll straight away get onto the talk. So initially I will uh, give a brief uh, overview of the ensemble Kalman filter, which all of you may be knowing, but uh, I need to explain it so that uh, where I fit in the parameter estimation uh, for the tsunami framework, that will be clear. So uh, this is a very simple process dynamics. X is the state in which in our case for the tsunami, it's the wave height and the two velocities in the X and Y direction. Um, uh, sigma X is the process noise and F is the model, which is the tsunami numerical model, which evolves the states given initial condition. Now, the measurements are given usually at sensor locations in C, where the measurement takes the tsunami wave height. So the tsunami wave height is recorded at the sensors, and this is what the measurement dynamics show. Um, so the usual ensemble Kalman filter, takes the states and evolves it, um, uh, predicts it according to the evolution path of the model, and it updates it using a Kalman gain. Uh, the Kalman mean can be corrected in the beginning or at each step, wherever the uh, assimilation is happening. What I mean by assimilation in this context is whenever the measurements are available, I incorporate that into the system. And if you can see here, the updated state x hat uh, is uh, is pulled from the x tilde which is a predicted um, uh, state in the direction of the kalman gain and what uh, is multiplied to the kalman gain is in some form the error at the sensor locations so the sensor location error is pushed by the kalman, kalman gain and it pulls the entire system to a state which hopefully is the correct state okay now um, so usually um, in, in, in the recent literature, two or three works, um, what has happened is um, a tsunami has a source. Every tsunami has a source. Either it's an earthquake or it's a volcano, underwater volcano or a landslide. But when tsunami assimilation is done in recently, maybe for the past uh, uh, four or five years in the literature, the source has not been made use in the um, assimilation. Um, what happens is uh, if there's an earthquake under the sea, the mass of land is lifted under the sea and this creates a lift in the initial sea surface. And this initial sea surface, as it lifts up, it drops under the influence of gravity and that is what causes the tsunami. It is difficult to pose uh, the tsunami propagation problem in terms of the initial conditions, because uh, as you see on the screen, uh, when parameter estimation is done, um, the parameters um, are evolving with the state. But in our case, uh, when the parameters are only available at t equal to zero, the initial state has the parameters and all the other state uh, uh, time instances after that do not contain the parameter explicitly. Um, so compared to the last equation, I have included theta, a parameter for the tsunami, which is something to do with the initial tsunami source. I'll show what that means. Uh, and the, the equations of the predictions and update get uh, changed accordingly as shown in the red. Now, this is the um, domain for simulation, very similar to what Alex was showing. On the left, uh, bottom left, you see the red hump. That is the initial swell in the sea. So the sea is lifted in a hump shaped, uh, um, it's a swell in the sea, and then it drops and tsunami propagates. Uh, the 
blue diamonds are the sensors. So on the left, I have put, uh, it's a standard benchmark for existing assimilation algorithms. Mm, it's a 36, six by six um, sensor network. And on the right is uh, just one sensor. I'll explain why only one sensor is being used. So recent works um, have all used some kind of Kalman gain to uh, update uh, the observations. And uh, the problem, I wouldn't say it's a problem, it works well, but they need a lot of uh, sensor locations and a lot of data. So um, you saw uh, the sensor locations, which is quite dense for a realistic case. It won't be so dense, but it is still dense enough so that the filter gets enough data to assimilate. Um, large ensemble sizes in terms of 100, um, and none of these use tsunami source parameters in the assimilation. So uh, in the initial discussions in the group, we were trying to do uh, the assimilation without the source parameters. So this is, a simple ENKF uh, uh, fil filtering uh, without any source parameters. That means uh, I take uh, uh, the observations at these 36 sensor points and I feed it into the uh, ensemble Kalman filter and let the states evolve. And what you see here is um, the waveform at the first sensor, when the tsunami from the source hits the sensor network, this is the first sensor. And the blue waveform shows the uh, tsunami wave, wave height recorded at the sensor. And the orange points show the assimilated waveform. And uh, this doesn't work well. And uh, apart from the fact that at the sensors, it doesn't match the observations. Uh, even in the state around the sensors and in the larger field, uh, the filter doesn't know that there is a waveform and it is not able to reconstruct the structure of the waveform. Um, so we tried with parameter included in the estimation. And for that, I don't use 36 sensors, but I just use one sensor. So, so this is the same sensor, uh, same tsunami waveform, and um, the orange dots show the assimilated waveform. And we can see that it kind of uh, matches the uh, waveform very nicely. This is only with uh, 10 ensemble size, while this was with 100 ensembles. So there is definitely uh, an improvement uh, if we include the parameters in the tsunami sim, uh, data simulation. Um, and this is the parameter. So the, the parameter was chosen, the initial peak of the uh, tsunami swell was chosen as one meter. And in the initial um, simulation instances, the wave hits uh, the sensor at around 200 seconds. And when the assimilation kicks in, the parameter slowly evolves and hits the value of one uh, and remains steady there. And after some time, it kind of uh, develops a lot of error. We have to solve this problem, but I think it is not a big issue. This is basically to do with after 620 seconds where you have very flat curve. So there's no much change in the uh, observations, and that's where the uh, parameter kind of fluctuates a little. So, if you observe this uh, waveform closely, um, when the um, assimilation starts at 200 seconds, you see that in the orange dots kind of match the waveform, the data at the sensors. Um, but since it's an initial value problem, there is no parameter in each update step of the Kalman filtering, uh, ensemble Kalman filter. 
So how do I incorporate the state, uh, the parameter? I rerun the model from the beginning t equal to zero to the instance of assimilation and that's time consuming. And that is what is shown in the middle. In between two assimilation instances, there is this orange curve which does not fully match with the observations uh, because uh, the parameter has not yet um, stabilized or converged. But once it converges, it kind of sticks to the observation. Now, uh, this is there is no magic in this. Uh, the problem is simple and uh, the model is linear shallow water equations. And uh, one sensor is enough in some sense to capture the parameter. There is enough information in one sensor to capture uh, the dynamics. Um, but what I want to show is that including a parameter scales down the problem a lot, uh, decrease in number of sensors, as well as uh, the number of ensembles required to converge. So I show a Okay, so on the left is the tsunami waveform. The initial hump has evolved till 200 seconds. And at 200 seconds, uh, the, the sensor has started pick up, picking up the waveforms. So on the left uh, is the actual simulation or by which I generate the synthetic waveforms for the study. In the middle, is the assimilated waveform. So at 200 seconds, nothing has started, no process has started. Um, on the right is the error between the assimilated and the uh, simulated waveform. So as the process runs, I think it's very quick. Um, so slowly the sensor starts picking data and the parameter gets parameter starts evolving and very soon within I think 30 seconds or 60 seconds, it has come close to what is the actual waveform. As I said, it is not the magic. It is because there is inform information in the uh, observations in the one sensor. One and, minute, okay, yeah. And yeah, after this, it kind of picks up and uh, it, it remains the same. The error is more or less zero after this. So, yep. so um, this is a work in progress. We have just tried with one source. Uh, we are currently doing multiple source, which is more closer to how uh, tsunami sources are defined in reality. And it takes 60 seconds to converge uh, to the um, parameters. Uh, we're using uh, uh, Langevin-based uh, assisted parameter-driven uh, evolution, um, which Maria has developed to increase the rate in which the parameter converges. And finally, uh, we would like to move from the rectangular grid, which is used now, to a triangular mesh. Uh, 